So my brother asked me if I wanted to paint some fairings on his motorcycle and I was like, dude, I would love the opportunity to paint your motorcycle because I think it's really cool. So anyway, he sent these fairings over, these little plastic body panels and they had some road rash on them. So I fixed them up with some different types of epoxy. I used JB Weld on one. I used some other two part body panel plastic repair. I forgot the name of the product. Maybe I'll show a picture of it. Uh, it's called like Fast 50 or something like that made by Smart or 3M or whatever. Anyway, I made this little mold out of the wax side of a sandpaper backing and you'll see how I basically rebuilt the tab and glued in these cracks and all that. So once I got all these tabs glued together and, and prepped and, and ready for primer, I had to really, really wash these panels good because I knew that with all this road rash and, and use, these panels very well could have grease or other contaminants that would conflict with the primer, base coat, clear coat, all that kind of stuff. So I really took the time and I don't think I showed any video or footage, but I really washed them good. I actually used a scuff pad and this product called Ting, T-I-N-G, which is a nice washing soap for getting panels ready for paint or, or just really clean. But it is, I think it might be slightly abrasive, so it's not for car detailing as much as paint prep. But I washed them really good with that. Um, I actually, because they're small, I took them up in my shower and used hot water and dish soap and ting and scuff pads and really washed all that grease and rubber and tar off because I did not want to have any conflicts with adhesion once I began to apply the primer. So it looks like I'm still showing and, or demonstrating all the process I used to prep the panels for that. You'll notice I was scraping some stickers off, which took a long time. Scraping the stickers was quite the project. That was a photo that shows the product I used. That's the fender. When I first got it, I had tons of road rash. Road rash all over that fender. And then there's stickers and road rash and stains and tar and maybe even some grease and oil and all that. So I was just obsessed with cleaning these things. I probably washed them a good two or three times just before the uh, primer process. I started out with epoxy primer. This is your basic PPG Omni epoxy primer. And then I used a filler primer. So the filler primer allows me to fill in cracks and crevasses and sand it smooth and um, minor imperfections. So I did that and then I started over again and actually I primed this project twice. So once I did my first sanding, I washed everything again, sprayed the second coat of primer, sanded it all down and then here I am applying some base coat. So the color I chose for this, it required about five coats for coverage and the color I chose first was a GM color and I, I didn't quite like the way it was. It wasn't vibrant enough to look like a super custom job. So I, uh, I asked my dad, who's got 30 years of matching color experience. He's probably the guy to ask about matching colors. But um, I said, hey, can you match this color? And if you have to make it look cooler, but the same color, like more awesome. So he did it and he got that color figured out and it has a lot of nice character and vibrant response to the sunlight. So everybody I've talked to so far loves this color and the pictures do not do it justice. Now I will admit there is some awesome photography in this video, but there's, there's a lot of character in this bike that you can see in person a lot more than a picture or a video. So here I am, it looks like I'm applying the first coat of clear um, and in my spray booth, I knew for a fact my spray booth was dirty because it's literally just in the garage and it's real tiny and made out of just plastic in the corner of the garage. So I anticipated the dust. So I laid the panels flat on those horses because I did not want runs because runs are much harder to sand out than sanding dust and reapplying clear coat. So that's what I did, laid those panels flat the runs were very minimal towards the edge of the panel, which you don't even see anyway. And uh, I was real happy. You'll see where I was, you know, kind of prototyping the design for the flame layouts. Once I got the first coat of color on, I was real excited. And so I was texting back and forth to my brother to see if he likes any of my sketches. And I actually used the base coat and sprayed uh, a piece of paper to get that color on the paper. 
uh, gas tank that was probably like two or three coats and then I had to apply some more paint to that get it to cover up real nice you'll see where I was sanding in between coats I'd let it thoroughly dry sanding out dust and nibs of, of any imperfections with 800 grit very very fine sandpaper and in between coats washing the panels with uh, lint free rags and allowing it to dry thoroughly and using uh, the air to blow off dust and finally the tack rag a very premium tack rag light pressure wiping off dust in between coats so if i did five coats of paint that procedure was in between probably four of those five coats so obviously the last coat you don't want to do that because you don't want to mess up the uh, the the pattern of the sparkles or metallic and pearl in the finished product you don't want that to show up but anyway that's how i did the paint you know nice five coats of beautiful sparkly pearl metallic turquoise teal green color going on there so i'm getting some more paint on here getting the flakes or getting the uh getting the pearl to lay out real nice controlling my fan pattern and uh I'm really, really happy with the color, and this part was really exciting. And you'll see eventually I apply the clear coat, and the clear coat really makes all that color pop. Uh, that's the clear I used, and that's some parts hanging up in the dirty shop. You'll notice the fender is a lot different now than when it was when I started. And that's just a scrap piece of metal I used to practice on. I purposely made mistakes, so that way I would know what to avoid when I got to the bike and on that panel um, it was a good learning experience these panels out in the sun i had to really show them off because they were so gorgeous with their first base coat clear coat that i was really sad to break out the sandpaper and scuff pads but i ended up getting over my ego and i just went there and scuffed them up so i could get ready for graphics because that's that was the assignment gorgeous panels with just that plain green color though but i uh, i decided to get them ready for them graphics and so scuffed them up sanded them again laid out some cool flames fender was negative flames uh, the fairings were positive flames and I did that so that way the uh, the pattern is more complementary to the geometrical shape of the bike rather than just your basic sticker kind of thing I didn't want his bike to look like a sticker I wanted it to look super custom so I did everything I could to do it in such a way where it looks custom where it looks hand painted and uh, of quality of course but when i when i was laying out these flames i just kind of went to town i didn't really have a specific plan other than using my prototype photo and practice as reference and i just kind of went to town laid them out taped them off Played with some colors and sparkles. Those change colors on the bottom. You won't see that in the photos. Color changing sparkles also. So if you see the bike in person, look at it from different angles. And so pulling the tape off was very, very tense, intense because I had to be very careful pulling the tape off to make sure I didn't cause any damage to the graphics while pulling it off. So I took my sweet time and I pulled that tape off as slow and precise as possible, pulling the fine line tape away at an angle so that way I can refrain from actually causing any issues with the graphics. So uh, this is just a small little clip, kind of shows removing the masking tape and it, notice how I pulled at that nice angle. See that angle I'm pulling it at to refrain from causing any further issues with that graphic so i got all my fine lines i will admit there is one little spot that i uh, did a little airbrush touch up but i'm not going to tell you where it's at so that way you can keep wondering and guessing where my little mistake was but that's a secret for now someone will find out someday but you probably won't notice it because i fixed it pretty good pulling the tape off revealing the graphics for the first time and uh i was pretty happy to see that first coat of clear go on top of the graphics. I was very excited. Uh, I took some of the pieces outside in the sunlight, look at it at different angles, see all the cool effects. And then uh, eventually I sanded it down again for that third final coat of clear to hide all my 
graphic lines and dust edges and all that. So I got my wet sand out. Uh, had to carefully wet sand it. I think this is probably 1,000 grit wet sandpaper. And I'm just wet sanding and lightly scuffing. And I even washed it again with that tinge compound, that ting compound, because I just am obsessed with making sure it's very clean. And whether it's necessary or not, it gave me a little peace of mind knowing that the possibility for adhesion issues or fish eyes was minimalized. So, because fish eyes and the lack of adhesion are like the worst nightmare. So, I was just going to town wet sanding, wet sanding and scuffing. And then I'd wash the panels off with water and soap and then go back and forth and dry the panels and, until I got the nice scuffed surface I was going for for nice adhesion. Then eventually I custom painted it and cleared it for the third time, got all the parts laid out, uh, sent some with my brother. He started to assemble the bike and then he was assembling that part of the bike while I was doing the custom graphics. So he was able to ride his bike for a week before the other panels were done, so that was nice for him. Because it was like the first day of nice weather, and he actually got out and enjoyed it for a minute. But I'm getting my third coat of clear on, and so that third coat of clear came out pretty good. Eventually I might do a little small wet sand and buff on it, but otherwise it's, it was pretty happy with what it, how it turned out. Uh, fender was by far my favorite little piece because of the symmetry and the nice curves on it as a as a piece by itself but it all was designed to go together and complement the shape of the bike as a whole not as an individual panel and that was my biggest focus is making sure the bike is its entirety was a design that complements the whole shape of the bike artistically and then eventually i went over to my brother's house we uh I stood there and watched him put it together, took some photos of him, and uh, then eventually as the sun was going down, we kind of did a little reveal, revealing what the bike looks like all together out in the sunlight. And there's a few parts here and there that still need to go on, but for the most part, it's, it's assembled. And I really appreciate everybody for sharing this video. I, I look forward to doing more custom projects in the future. Mm-hmm.